Hey, I'm right back with another video. It's 8.34 p.m. It is August 19th, Wednesday evening. The sun's gone down, and I am just kind of kicking back in my room and just relaxing for the rest of the evening. So I came on here to make this video because I saw a video a post on Facebook. Um, you know, I don't get on Facebook very often, but you know, the last few days I've been really bored, um, as you probably guessed. So I got on Facebook to see, you know, if anybody posted any funny memes or, um, you know, just to see what was going on. So anyway, I saw um, a post in a targeted individual um, group that I belong to. And it was basically asking the question as to whether or not you would talk about your targeting if your targeting stopped. And I, I would say... Um, probably yes I think I would um mainly because actually I don't really feel as though I need to talk about the targeting anymore <clears throat> but only from like an educational point of view which is when, one of the reasons why I made the last videos if any of my perps watch my videos they notice that there it is not personal it's more me talking about the situation or targeted individuals what we experience <clears throat> in general and I do believe that it's good information. Now, in the last few videos, I did make a statement about a few individuals who were involved in my targeting. And the reason why I mentioned them is because I felt that it was important because I needed to understand exactly who was involved. And sometimes the information comes to me based on memories that I had to try to solve the puzzle to what was going on with me. But I don't want to focus on it individuals anymore I'm in the last few days I've just been thinking you know I really want to move on and it's been a very trying time for me um, mainly because I realized that this was a tragedy I mean I, I feel as though what I've lived through was an absolute nightmare and um, you know it's it's better for me to direct my life into a, you know um, territories that I prefer to go into and not dwelling on that issue um, specifically relating to my um, my ex-family members and people that I used to know who were involved in my targeting but I do think that you know it's important that you know employers do adapt ethical business practices because we know that this issue of targeted individuals is you know a, a big problem and you know there's a lot of violations that go on in in workplaces that um that shouldn't be and it's very damaging to an individual um most people don't realize that these sort of dangers can occur in the workplace um you think you're just going there to do a job or whatever and then you end up dealing with something that you never dreamed of happening so it's important that I think people know. The next video I plan on doing is talking about the correlation between human trafficking and gang stalking, which I promised that for a while. But um, as far as like thinking about people, individuals, I think that I've pretty much covered everything. I keep asking myself, is there something else? Is there something else? Because it's important for me to understand exactly what happened. Now for people who could get angry and jump to conclusions about my frustrations because um, I know I, I think when you're dealing with people um, such as the people that I used to know perps or whatever um, you're you're going to deal with a lot of hotheads and people who are going to get angry and retaliate against you when you're expressing your feelings and I will say that if you were if they were in your shoes they would be doing the same thing because it is very number one it's not a normal situation to be in number two um, you feel violated on many many levels you feel as though obviously you're dealing with something that's unjust so it is especially when you consider the duration of how long it lasted you're going to need to speak out about it you're going to need to talk about it and to not talk about it uh, i think is even worse um, on a person 
um, than just holding just holding it inside. It's it's a lot to hold on, you know, when you can't really you can't go and have a conversation to with anybody about it because no one's ever going to clarify anything for you. So you're left to implode it on yourself. And the issue here is that, you know, people can only carry so much of a burden. They can only handle so much as a human being. And <clears throat> I would say that what I dealt with <clears throat> was extremely, um, uh, what do you call it? Damaging, like on so many levels. I mean, not just financially, but just like disturbing <clears throat> that someone would put you in a situation like this. And so, no, I, I think my answer would be no. I don't even really want to talk about it. Like, like a few days ago, <laughs> I was like, I, I just got up and I was getting ready to get out of bed. And I remember like a thought of um, one of the perps that I n knew um, popped into my head. And I kept thinking, no, you know what? Don't start this. Don't start it. Pick up something, do something else, divert my attention. And so my, my goal right now is to get my life back in order and move away from what caused me the most pain that I've ever experienced in my entire life. And so that's what my thing is. Um, but I do think it's a lesson to be learned. And I think that it's something that if you can generalize the situation, meaning um, maybe talk about it in a way where you can educate other people, I think it's important, you know, do I want to talk about my ex-family? Do I want to talk about my ex-marriage, my ex-marital um, partner? Do I want to talk about um, things that happened to me specifically at work? Not really. I think I've addressed all of that. Um, I know that, you know, the people that I had worked with in the past were involved in it. Obviously, my ex-family was involved in it. And I believe um, my ex-husband and his family was involved in it. And these are people that I choose to forget, okay? Um, so, no, <laughs> I don't I, I don't think I'm going to talk about it on personal terms. And the only next, the next video that I'm doing is not mentioning anyone. It's basically just talking about how these programs are very similar because human trafficking um, uses the same tactics as gang stalking in order to accomplish this goal. And so <clears throat> this is one of the things that I'm trying to get people to understand. And do I want this information to go widespread? I would say, well, there's a lot of information out there, but a lot of people aren't paying attention. Um, what I mean by that is, <clears throat> well, I know it's been picked up by the news. There's been some news coverage, not on my story specifically, but there has been targeted individuals who have come up and talked about it on news stations before. Um, so it has been covered in the news. Um, and then obviously, if you do some research, you can find laws on this issue, whatever. But my issue is more about education than anything else. And once I finish this particular video, the human trafficking slash gang stalking video, um, I would prefer to move on to other things. At this moment, my goal right now is to get back on my feet. <laughs> and that's pretty much the only thing I really should be focusing on. And it's a very slow process because... When you're a targeted individual, you know, rumors will still kind of be lingering around or, you know, um, you know, some things can catch you off guard. And so um, my issue, my biggest issue, I think, as a targeted individual, as with most targeted individuals, is that our voices aren't heard. There's generally a sort of ridiculous amount of slander going on around you, um, people coming up with what do you call it speculations and the speculations become gossip and then some people accept these gossip this gossip that's going around as truths so you kind of feel like well you're just a victim because you know everyone's this is a covert operation you don't really have the ability to stand up and say anything for yourself so i do encourage targeted individuals to make videos about their situation and um because otherwise and it's not so much even, well, okay, well, number one, this serves two purposes. It serves purposes because, number one, the community doesn't know your side of the story, okay? And number two, a lot of times your perps may have ideas, preconceived ideas about you, or maybe they have a very one-sided way of looking at things. Um, you know, I had mentioned there there's people who are involved 
who come from a particular religion. I'm not mentioning names, okay? But for some people who have never experienced um, associating with other people or even really have any, I consider to be social skills, okay? Some people live in a bubble and they lived in this bubble all their life and they think that everything around them is this bubble, okay? So like if you were raised, like for example, in a strict Catholic home and your community was, you know, a strict Catholic community, okay? Um, and then you go, and let's just say, for example, you move into a different environment, and then all of a sudden you're interacting with all these different people, right? So you think that what, you know, you think that what happened back home and what, how your family raised you and how the people that you, the people that you knew is the same way of communicating with these new group of people that you're in in this environment. You're dealing with, you've got Jewish people, you've got, you know, Methodists, you've got Protestant, um, what do you call it, Presbyterians, you've got Baptists, you have all these different groups of people, and you're still thinking that everybody sees the world the way that you do. And then you treat people the way they do. And if they do something that deviates from your bubble or your world, then you feel as though they are um, deserving of ridicule or some sort of punishment, when in fact... That's not necessarily the case. And so some of it is people being naive or whatever. And then, of course, you do have the evil issue that you have to consider. I mean, especially if it's something that um, once they stand, you, you correct their issue, you bring it out to show the flaw or the error in their ways, and they continue to do it, then you have to pretty much write these people off as evil, okay? But my, my, my point is, is that, you know, it's worth talking about your issue, and I, I can honestly say that I don't regret talking about it, um, mainly because it, it took me a long time to figure out exactly what happened. And it was, I will tell you, when it's almost like somebody hitting you in the head really hard, and then you have all these fragmented pieces that take a long time to surface up and put it all together as to who's involved <clears> or <throat> whatever. But anyway, to get to, to the answer, the answer is no. I, I wouldn't talk about it. Um, I would like to take my life into a different direction, and and that's really what I want to do right now. And that's really the only thing that I think is important. Um, of course, I do want to do that video because it's something that, number one, when it comes to PowerPoint, um, I'm wanting to get more comfortable with it. And, you know, I think I did okay on those videos. Um, I would like to do more videos in the future, not relating to gang stalking, but things that are more education like fun facts or um things based on history or something you know just something that's different because I really do want to take my channel to a different direction but um but it has given me these particular projects that I did have given me more hands-on with PowerPoint which I'm very grateful for and there's so much more that I can do with PowerPoint um in the future you know um and I think that there's been like some improvements, you know, as far as, you know, how I've been doing the videos and I would like to see my videos like, you know, perfected, you know, as I go on. <clears throat> but, um, you know, so anyway, what I've been doing lately is I have just been thinking about what, you know, what, what do I want to do? What, what is it that I want when it comes to, you know, how can I get myself back? to where I'm feeling a sense of normalcy. Like, I don't feel where, I, I'm not really where I want to be right now. And really, it's been something that I've been struggling with for a very long time, that for issues that were beyond my control. And, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> and that's really pretty much what my main goal right now is. And that's really the only thing I care about. <laughs> You know, of course, I care about other things, you know, um, in which I want to talk about other things on my videos. Because, you know, being a targeted individual, you are isolated, you are um, beyond your control, and you feel like everything, you know, you, you are basically in an invisible bubble, okay? And the reason why is because you feel as though you can't make negotiations, you can't do things on your own without some third party coming in or whatever and this is the problem and this is the biggest issue that that involves people with 
who are involved in human trafficking or victims of human trafficking. So, you know, this is my big, my, my biggest focus right now. Um, and it's hard. It's very hard, you know, but I, I don't regret making those videos. I don't make, I regret them. Do I want to hold grudges or anything? You know, these people that did what they did to me, <clears throat> I will say that, um, you know, in my mind, you know, there's, there's a, it, it should be understood that, you know, some people went, they went too far. Okay. And I really do feel as though they should not have done what they did. And, um, you know, it's not even so much a matter of holding a grudge. It's mostly, I just want to forget they exist. And it's for my own good. You know, and it is. It's for my own good. Sometimes things become too traumatizing. And really, um, I suggest, and it, I really do suggest that if someone has ever harmed you in that sort of manner, that you separate from them as soon as you possibly can. In, in, in every way you possibly can. And it's the best for you. It's not a functional relationship. And so um, it, it, it's the wisest thing to do, okay? Um, I do believe in these practices, these fair practices, I do, um, mainly because there's so many people who are unhappy with their jobs <clears throat> and there's so many people who could have had longer lives. I, I really do believe that things that, um, like for example, <clears throat> heart attacks and strokes, I do believe a lot of that is associated with people's work environments. I mean, when we think about the time that we put into work and the time that we actually get to spend with our actual families or whatever, you know, I would say work takes up a lot of people's lives. And, you know, it's not an uncommon thing to encounter a narcissistic boss or as seeing as how common things like stalking is, <clears throat> it's not uncommon that, that this happens either. So, you know, my biggest issue is, or my biggest focus and my biggest disappointment, I should say, would be the fact that, you know, I'm very goal oriented. You know, I like... I believe in processes, in function, in, in, in production. I believe in things should be constantly moving and improving itself at, at all times, you know. And this is the kind of person I am. This is my work ethic, and this is why I find so much drive in everything that I do. And, and this is what I, I like, you know, for myself, okay. And I always, I always believe that this is what work is supposed to be about. At least that's how I see it, okay? Um, when I see, you know, what I've seen and I've experienced in my life is that sometimes it's not always working hard or be the hardest worker or somebody who cares or whatever is what gets people on top. And, you know, that's, that, that's very disheartening for a lot of people, you know? But I would still rather have a very strong work ethic and believe in my vision because I, mean, I do have I believe in what I talk about okay and I do believe that workplaces could be a happier more productive place um, and I can't help that you know what I mean because I think it's so obvious that there's a lot wrong in 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 the workforce these days and it, there's always been corruption in the workforce mind you okay but um, I believe that it's not, you're never going to stop evil, bickering, competitive people. You cannot stop that, but you can curb it, okay? You can curb it, and I do believe that there's ways that you can do that. And I, I believe that I am in some way um, kind of like a person who is a researcher or somebody who is a, um, somebody who observes okay, observes how certain people um, conduct their businesses. And that could be in any way. It could be in their behavior. It could be the tone. It could be the platform. It could be even their processes, even their, their procedures. You know, I look at these things and I'm always thinking, how could this be fine-tuned? How could this be better? How could this be better? You know, and maybe um, a lot of that comes from my... <laughs> 
unfortunate experiences and then a lot of it comes from things I've learned is like you know it, it doesn't make logical sense it makes more I'm about order okay is what I'm at I'm into I'm into order and I'm very um, you know um, serious about when it comes to work you know and um, so I get a little bit edgy and agitated when people throw you know issues into the workplace that don't belong you know and so like you know um because you know i understand like some people you know i i i've dealt with people that um in the past who they don't necessarily have to take their job seriously okay they have time to play stalking games they have time to gossip they have got you know time to engage in certain campaigns and stuff that's not related to their job and they don't pay any consequence for that okay but i'm somebody who takes my job seriously you know and it, it really means something to me and these, these sort of things just gone go through my mind continuously like you know i guess you can call me like um i don't know uh, someone who just i don't know i guess this is just who i am like how i function you know Anyway, um, I guess maybe you might want to call me like an engineer of, <laughs> of workplaces or work environments or whatever. I don't know. Um, but this is, I guess, just how I am, you know. And I do believe in the things that I say 100%. And so I can stand up and, and face people and talk about this, you know, and talk about it. And I, I can't really be swayed to believe any other way only because you know i think about issues relating to the law and how it coincides with what i'm saying and not just the law but our rights as united states citizens and whatever you know and i also believe that it's if you're going to bring religion into it it should also be a, a matter of uh the respect of religious dogma you know like you know everyone has their different religious beliefs but here in the United States, we have the right to practice whatever religion we want to. And so, you know, you're going to have Catholics butting heads with Lutherans, and you're going to have, you know, it, whatever the predominant group is. And really, when I look around, these same people, you know, I know there was a few Catholics who were involved in this. They're not being gang stalked, but yet they're still affiliated with this particular group. So, you know, whatever the case is. My, my thing is, is that um, I want to move past the whole gang stalking thing I really do it's just you know I, it just doesn't really serve a function other than I mean I to educate for me to bring up specific individuals um you know in the last video that I made it's because I needed to clarify some things because it became oh I became aware of how much involvement that this particular person had and so you know, obviously, I don't agree with someone that I didn't feel comfortable with in the first place after dealing with this issue and then knowing that they got behind something that was so important as my work. You know, that's a no-no. You, you, you don't do that, okay? So it was important for me to assert myself and make a statement about it because, you know, um, I didn't appreciate it. And that's my biggest issue, okay? Um, no, I don't want to, you know, go on and on about it. I don't, I think I said enough. I think I did. Um, I can't think of anyone else that I needed to mention, you know. Um, and I hope that these people understand that a relationship with them is not in the best interest of either party. Like, you know, it just isn't. So I'd just rather move on and forget these people. And I don't want to be in a competition with anyone at all. Okay. What I need in my life is about survival. It's not about competition. And some people might think, well, because I brought up a lot of points and I do defend myself well, they're thinking, well, you're just getting big headed because I'm going to tell you this is not about arrogance or pride or anything. Okay. It's like if somebody <clears throat> came at you and they were lunging at you with a knife, and they're just like, you know, ready to stab you, you are, your first instinct is to push this person away, okay, to get them away from you, and once you get them away from you, you're not sitting here like, you know, you know, asking for praises, you're not doing anything like that, what you're doing is you're trying to catch your breath, trying to get yourself 
you know, <clears throat> back to being orientated correctly and get on with your life, okay? Um, and the same thing. In this case, I had people who were damaging me on so many levels. And so I realized I, I can't confront these people because I don't know where they are. You know what I mean? I, I know that who they are, but like, for example, the person I mentioned in my last video, I have no idea of this person's whereabouts, okay? I'm not going to go up to... Uh, the last time I went up to this co particular company that she worked for, I didn't see her there. But that's what, the reason why I went there in the first place. But I don't know where this person is specifically, okay? So, um, but I know that this person was involved in my employment issue. And so, you know, I can't have a conversation with this person. Nothing that this person would say is going to justify her actions or even make any sense or even, you know... It's not excusable, okay? But whatever the case is, this person was attacking me. This person was bothering me. This person was hurting me. This person was harming me, stalking me. They were hurt, harming me financially, um, you know? And so my issue is it's not because I feel like I'm in a competition. It is, okay, back off, stay away from me, and leave me alone. Okay, and I'm not, this isn't about pride, it's not about arrogance, because I'm not looking for kudos or anything like that. It's about somebody attacking you and you pushing this person away. And once you do that, you don't feel the need to get, you know, a back, a, your back padded or anybody singing you praises. You just want to stand back and catch your breath and figure out, my God, why in the world would somebody attack you? You feel just completely emotionally depleted you're exhausted you know so no it's not about that <clears throat> i've never thought to compete in that manner i always believe that if you uh, believe in your skill then you present yourself to the employer and you basically state yourself state what you have to offer to that employer and you try to highlight your strengths and that's it okay i don't believe in throwing people under the bus only because i understand the means of doing that are illegal okay and it really never occurred to me to do that in the first place okay so um no i i'm not about it's not about competition i think that some people you know every time you stand up for yourself especially if people are competitive towards you they will look at everything that you do as a slight like everything that you do um is somehow like uh, again uh, against them or they feel as though you did this to harm them or something not true okay but i will say i stood up for myself like i stood up to my for myself when it came to the employers that were abusing me and i had to i had to because otherwise you know i god knows what could happen you know what i mean you you have to stand up for yourself and if you don't then you know you basically are saying, okay, I'm okay with this, and I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this, you know? So anyway, um, so I think that's pretty much all I really wanted to say, you know, about this. And, you know, um, you know, I, I think when it comes to Facebook, um, you know, I know that I, I don't really feel as though, you know, I feel tr like I can trust people. Not just on Facebook, but anywhere. I mean, after you've been gang stalked you are reluctant to open yourself up to people any more than you have to. I mean, you have your polite exchanges and so on, but you really do feel this need to be protective of yourself. And that's my biggest issue right now, is that I feel like I need to protect myself. Because, you know, I realize that not everybody has, you know, strong morals. Not everybody has um, a sense of what's right and what's wrong, you know? And when it comes to, I was thinking a few days ago, no, was it this morning? I think it was this morning. I was thinking about, there was this, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll mention that some other time. But I will say that, you know, there, there's people who, who, if you get them in group mentality, that they will carry out some pretty shocking things that they ordinarily wouldn't do on their own, okay? And when they are encouraged because they see the group participation or they see somebody that you're related to who is participating and you're targeting, they feel justified 
in being a part of a campaign that could be extremely abusive to you just because they feel, you know, justified. And my point is, is that um, there is no justification for this. And it's not something that I, I agree with. I, I don't have a close relationship with my blood relatives. I don't have a close relationship. Um, I'm divorced and I don't have a relationship with my ex-husband. I don't really know his family. Um, I've only met his, his relatives a few times. I don't really know them very well. Um, but when it comes to work issues, okay, um, work issues are something, and I know people, you know, say, oh, you, you need people, you need people. Um, you know, I, I don't know about that. I would prefer to do things on my own. And I know I'm, it's, it's, it's a slow process. I will, and some people, I know you might, if you have a perp in, involved in your targeting, you're always wondering, well, how come you're not getting out there and doing your stuff? I will tell you, you don't know which direction to go once you've dealt with gang stalking. Okay, so it takes time and you have to figure out what you need to do. You, you have to devise you know, some sort of plan so that you can, you know, expand because what they do is they infiltrate, you know, job ads and stuff with fake ads. So you encounter a lot of problems. So you have to figure things out on your own. And so, you know, you don't appreciate being put in this bubble. And the very fact that you are in a bubble is one that they created. You see what I'm saying? So it's your responsibility to try to get yourself out of it. You know what I mean? And I feel as though the people that who are involved in my targeting are not in a, aren't someone who, they're not people that I can trust to make <clears throat> choices in my best interest, okay? Um, you know, I was thinking about my last job that I worked, um, the last one, before I got, you know, quote unquote laid off. Um, and I've been off from work for quite a long time. Um, you know, obviously, I, I would not have chosen a job like that. I just wouldn't, okay? And because I'm, as, a, as an older adult, I'm thinking about long-term. And sometimes you have to take short-term jobs. Sometimes, you know, <clears throat> I knew of several adults who had to, you know, do whatever they had to do. They had to take whatever job they had to get until they got to something that was more suitable for them, Okay. But nobody wants to walk into a toxic environment. Nobody wants to um, be isolated. Nobody wants to be, you know, dealing with like a thick, heavy atmosphere of gossip and whatever. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, people are always going to talk about you, no matter what. You can't change that, whether you have purpose or not, okay? People are always going to speculate about who you are, what you do. And then people are always going to, you are never going to find an environment where you know somebody is not going to have an issue people are for the most part um 